Slide, all sorts of manner of things happen, but amusement rides like trains go down tracks, they're tethered, they're hooked to long steel arms, but stuff happens. Just like on a train, in spite of everybody's best efforts, incidents do occur. And I believe that with an extra set of eyes that's been talked about today, that we can try to minimize some of the incidents that, that have occurred over the years. This is a very safe industry, and the industry accommodates millions of people very safely. But one of the other things that are commonly overlooked is a large number of small facilities. You say amusement park and you automatically come to mind with Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, uh, Great America, things like that. And these people have very large staffs with very experienced people that have nothing to do but inspect amusement rides, maintain amusement rides, and make sure that they are safe. And yet we still continue to have incidents. We also have a number of family entertainment centers and that's become a very large industry in the last few years where we have amusement rides, we have golf or miniature golf courses that now have grown in the family entertainment centers that have amusement rides and these are in the words of the uh, the uh, AB850 here considered an amusement park. There's a lot of family-owned small amusement parks that have rides that are only open for a few months during the summer and hire temporary operators and temporary staff with very little or no training. And um, this bill would also accommodate these people and help them formulate a operator training program that would try to minimize the incident rate. In order for people to be informed consumers, they have to be told of the incidents and the, and the pitfalls that they're about to experience. And uh, as Kathy so aptly brought out earlier, if, you, if you're never told of an incident or never told of the injury, the injury never happened. That's the, that's the impression that we all get. And I think uh, this bill brings forth to the, the public an opportunity for them to be well informed as to actually what does occur at these amusement parks. And I support uh, AB 850 and I encourage the <coughs> committee's I vote. Thank you very much uh, for, for Ray's input along the way and he's with other safety officials added a lot to the expertise uh, that's been brought to bear. Um, we have others who've arrived uh, as guests today that we weren't aware we were arriving, but have come, and we uh, welcome them. Ms. Nelson, Ms. Nelson? That's correct. Welcome to you. Yes. Please, if you don't mind moving up just a little bit closer Mrs. to the microphone. Nelson's daughter was involved in the accident in Concord that was so tragic. I understand. Chair and Assembly people, I thank you for your time, and I will try and make this brief. Just my name is Victoria Nelson, <coughs> and my only child's name is Quimby Gelati. Quimby was a fun-loving high school girl, honor roll student, had planned to go to Sonoma State University to get a PhD in psychology to work with terminally ill children. She was the light of her mother's life and a good girl. On June 2nd, her class, her senior class at Napa High School went to Waterworld in Concord. She fell from the top of their slide that broke 35 feet and died within an hour. I ask you all, please, don't let this happen. Don't let this happen to another precious child. Don't permit another grieving family to go through the torment that I have. I think and I wonder if this bill had been in effect two years ago, whether my daughter would be in college her second year dating and enjoying life. 
I am so grateful and so appreciative mm -hmm. to Assemblyman Torkelson. And I pray with all of my heart, and I ask all of you, please, do what you can to make this pass. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your, your courage and, and, and your willingness to come on up here and share your story with us. And we, we all uh, give you our condolences on, on your loss and what you've gone through. But thank you for having the courage to share that with us. Yeah. Are there other support witnesses? Uh, He's going to be very brief. Very uh, brief. Another witness I wasn't uh, aware was arriving, but he had con testified earlier in the hearing. He's just going to support the bill. Relatively brief. Thank my, you. my name is Al Limberg. I'm from. I'm a resident of Concord, California, and a 34-year veteran consumer protection law enforcement officer, now retired. I worked for the uh, U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission for 23 years, and was here in 1980 when the Kyle Foss incident occurred at uh, Marriott's Great America. We've been through this incident, uh, through these incidents, a number of times over the years. And while I'm a firm believer that the sole legitimate purpose of government is to do for the people the things that they can't reasonably do for themselves, um, I, the, on the way I see it, the, the average consumer cannot <clears throat> cannot assure for themselves that amusement park rides and attractions are safe, and that the government should do that for them. California is in a unique position at the moment to write a good piece of legislation that will accomplish exactly that. I encourage the, the legislature to enact legislation that will cause this to happen. Toward that end, I have several recommendations. First, the regulating agency in this particular case probably should be the Department, Division of Industrial Relations, or Cal OSHA, since they already are doing this with mobile rides um, and will, not, will hit, have less tulip time. Second, include a mandatory record keeping and reporting requirement in the law akin to that uh, to those requirements in the OSHA regulations. Third, establish a substantial product hazard reporting requirement similar if not identical to that included in section 15 <laughs> of the US Consumer Product Safety Act. That's uh, 15 USC 2064B. The Division of Industrial Relations should probably be the agency to receive such reports and do not limit such reporting requirements to injuries and deaths. In the Foss case, there were non-injury and minor injury cases or incidents that foretold that particular fatality. Fourth, include a mandatory surprise inspection and incident investigation provision. All injury incidents should be investigated. Non-fatal accidents are the best source of information on how to prevent future incidents. In a fatal accident, the best witness is dead. And last, make the penalties for failure to comply sufficient to get the industry attention. The Consumer Product Safety Commission settlement in the, in the Kyle Foss case or in the uh, Merrick, Great America.